What is the question about eating salad with a bunch of ranch on it? Is only eating salad if it's drowning in ranch a personality type, or is that just a problem? <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Sam, and welcome to the internet where things happen. Today, I'm going to take a personality test. Society says it's important to do that. I'm going to take the uh, test that is at 16personalities.com. It's a free personality test, which was right up there on my criteria for tests that I would take for this exercise. Um, and it's going to tell me my Myers-Briggs type. N, J, P, P, Q, L, Q, M, L, L, C, X. I don't know. It's fine. You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. Ho! Oh, I'm gonna do a light disagree on that one. Really, I enjoy the time, but it really skeezes me out. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after, oh, oh, long after it had taken place. Hard agree. Golly. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try to solve their problem. Sometimes you shouldn't solve people's problems. Sometimes if somebody is upset and they feel like they, you're with them and you don't know what to do, sometimes just being there and validating their feelings is enough. And sometimes that's all anybody ever wants out of a, an emotional support friend. So just remember that. And if they want you to help solve the problem, they'll ask you. People can rarely upset you. That is a medium disagree. People upset me all the time, especially when I'm driving. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it is your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. That's like right in the middle because it depends on what the plans are and who they're with. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't want to hang out with you and that's okay. You rarely worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. Duh, hard disagree. I, uh, yeah, I worry about literally every social interaction I have. It's no way to live. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. Disagree. I could just... I have, I have people in my life that can attest to this. I can just stay in my room all weekend and be fine. We should all be striving to be that person. Be comfortable and content in yourself enough that you with don't need weekends. No, that wasn't right. You are more of a detail oriented than a big picture person. Strong disagree. I like to look top down. I have a big picture and then I fill in the details later once I know what the picture is of. That's how pictures work, right? You are very affectionate with people you care about. Strong agree. And my affection comes in many forms. Sometimes it is gentleness. Sometimes it is verbal abuse. Only when it's welcome. <laughs> You have a careful and methodical approach to life. Do I? I kind of just wing it. You are still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. Oh, give me a hell yeah. It's <laughs> a medium degree. You often find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. Disagree, I'm that way, hey. When looking for a movie to watch, you can spend ages browsing the catalog. Agree. I honestly, sometimes browsing the browsing Netflix is oftentimes more fun than actually watching something on Netflix. That may say more about me than anything else, but it's true. You can stay calm under a lot of pressure. I'm gonna do like a small agree because, no, like a small, hmm, small agree. I'm not great at it, but I look like I'm great at it. And really, isn't that just as good as being great at it? Who's to, who's to say? When in a group of people you do not know, you have no problem jumping right into their conversation. I used to think I was bad at that, but sometimes I'll just be like sitting somewhere 
and the like, people will be having a conversation. They'll be like, "What? Yeah, that thing is like pretty good, right?" Like, <laughs> so that's kind of who I am. When you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. I once had a dream that I was roller skating on a donut with lava in the middle and spikes on the edge. And I was being chased by Frankenstein's monster who was also on roller skates. So, if I could get any dream interpreters to tell me what that means, would really appreciate that. Thanks. In your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life. Hell no. Dude, just do, live your, do your best. Do your best. Stepping on other people is not cool, dude. Like, could you chill? Could you not? Could you just do, live, live your life on your own merits and just be cool for like a second, please? Thank you. You are dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. <laughs> I don't really know where I'm going half the time. Do I set goals? Yes. Do I know what I'm doing when I do it? No. Uh, do I get there in the end? Probably. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. That's a hard disagree, my friend. Depends on the others, but that's a hard disagree. <laughs> Done it before, I'll do it again. I might do it right now. <laughs> Give me the fucking Oscar. <laughs> you like discussing different views and theories on what the world could look like in the future. I don't really care. We're all going to die anyway. But it's fun to think about, right? You cannot imagine yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you cannot see, touch, or experience. Oh, what? Man, I don't know. Small agree. I don't know. Who studies? Who studies? Nobody. You usually prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive. My MO is really is usually if somebody has done me wrong, I will stop talking to them for uh, several years and then reconnect with them down the line. Or I block them on everything, including LinkedIn. Wow. The time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with other people. <sighs> These days it's like a middle, like, like a hard middle. I'd say, because yeah, uh, Hold on. I have my days where I need one over the other, and it really is a middle ground decision because sometimes the time I spend with my friends and other people is some of the most valuable time that I have in my life. Sometimes you just need to lay in bed and do nothing, and that's also very valuable. So uh, I wouldn't say often, but equally, it would be a better word. So we're sticking in the middle. You often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning of a message of a song or a movie. I only watch Fast and the Furious movies, like on repeat. You always know exactly what you want. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. I don't think anybody really knows exactly what they want at all times, whether they think they do or not. What 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 somebody wants is changes and is determined by how you experience the rest of your life. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt or two, maybe three. Honestly, who came up with the phrase "take it with a grain of salt"? Like you're not using enough salt. It's already, there's already, that's already a common problem in cooking. You're not using enough salt. Use more salt. Take it with a tablespoon of salt. Or like a two tablespoons of salt. And a baked potato. With butter. 
and I'm hungry. You rarely think back on the choices you have made and wonder what you could have done differently. I think about things that I've done and it makes me embarrassed sometimes, but if I could have, like, if I could have changed the things that I've done, then I wouldn't be here and be who I am and where I am in this moment right now, which I think may honestly be the best version of me at uh, this current point in time. Am I, do I regret things that I've done? Yes. Would I change it? Maybe. You tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. <laughs> I think about possible futures constantly. That's, that's more my speed than thinking about what to change in the past, what's happening in the future. Let me get there. Flying cars, I'm there. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Strong disagree. Oftentimes, that's my biggest problem, is understanding other people's feelings. I feel them too hard. When you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed in you. Strong agree. Every single day. Up to and including right now. You look after yourself first and others come in second. That is A, medium disagree, because I've been told that's an issue I have by several of my bosses <laughs> in the past. <laughs> you often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. No, not really. It's medium disagree. I don't like what's, we're here. Why do we need meaning in that? Just enjoy what you, that you're here. You rarely dwell on your regrets. You find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Yes, I'm very good at empathy. I'm very good at empathy. Fight me. After a long and exhausting week, a fun party is just what you need. I'm going middle on that because sometimes it is not. Because like, like the other week, I had this insanely busy week at work and on Friday I just went home and I slept all day. The next Friday I was just like, I'm so frustrated with some stuff that's happening. I need time with my friends and I did spend time with my friends and it was great. So I'll say the middle, it just, it just depends. It just depends, everything depends. This is also, this is also, stop. This is also cut and dry. Like, it, like these, these, all of these things are, depend on the day, the life, the situation. I don't know. People claim that they're like super accurate, but you don't know. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological, bleh, that's not how you say that word. Technological advancement could change everyday life. Hell yeah, I do. Man, what if we had robots? Wouldn't that be cool? Ooh, I can get my results. Let's see results. What am I? What am I? What am I? I am the mediator. I N F P T. 56% introverted, 44% extroverted, 58% intuitive, and 42% observant, 89% feeling, and 11% thinking, 68% prospecting, and 32% judging, 78% turbulent, and 22% assertive. That sounds about right. 22% assertive. No, no, be assertive. Beep, beep. Not insertive. Hmm, do I have time to read all this? There's so, these things always have so many words. Strengths and weaknesses, let's do that. Can, do we, can I get it in a bullet point? Can I get it, can I get an amen? I am idealistic. Um. My friends and loved ones will come to admire and depend on me for my optimism. Their unshaken belief that all people are inherently good, perhaps simply misunderstood, lends itself to an incredibly resilient attitude in the face of hardship. Yeah, okay. I seek value and harmony. No interest in having power over others, and I don't much care for domineering attitudes at all. Work hard to ensure that every voice and perspective is heard. Try my best. So long as my principles and ideas are not being challenged, I will support others' rights to do what they think is right. Yes. Very creative, speaks for itself. <laughs> when something captures a mediator's imagination and speaks to their belief, they go all in, 
dedicating their time, energy, thoughts, and emotions to the project. My shyness keeps me from the podium, but they are the, I am the first to lend a helping hand where it's needed. And you know what? Sometimes it puts me on the podium too, literally. Sometimes I'm on stage talking to a lot of people and that's a challenge. What are my, what are my weaknesses? I'm idealistic, but I'm too idealistic. I take my idealism too far. Sometimes I take thing pers things personally. Yeah, like a lot. And this one is, I kind of disagree with, is difficult to get to know. I don't think I am, I think I'm pretty open, but that's about the only thing that I can really say is wrong about this so far. Mediators' tendency to focus their attention on just a few people in their lives means that they will approach new relationships wholeheartedly with a sense of inherent value, dedication, and trust. Yeah, okay. That being said, dun dun dun. Why is that so dramatic? We're not necessarily in a rush to commit. We are, after all, prospecting types and are almost always looking to either establish a new relationship or improve an existing one. We need to make sure we found someone compatible. Yeah, y'all, yeah. yes. When dating, we will often start with a flurry of comparisons, exploring all the ways the current flame matches with the ideal that I've imagined. This progression can be a challenge for a new partner, as not everyone is able to keep up with the mediator's rich imagination and moral standards. If incompatibilities and conflict over this initial rush mount, the relationship can end quickly with mediators likely sighing that it wasn't meant to be. Woe is me. Woe is me. Where's that spray bottle? The true friends of people with a mediator personality type tend to be few and far between, but those that make the cut are often friends for life. The challenge is the many dualities that this type harbors when it comes to being sociable. Mediators crave the depth of mutual human understanding but tire easily in social situations. They are excellent at reading into each other's into others feelings and motivations but are often willing to provide others the same insight into themselves. It's as though mediators like the idea of human contact but not the reality of social contact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a lot more stuff in here about workplace habits and parenthood and careers and things like that. What does it say about careers? I'm curious about careers. It is perhaps more challenging than for mediators to find a satisfying career type than any other type. Though intelligent, the regimented learning style of most schools make long years earning an advanced degree a formidable undertaking for people with a mediator personality type. So formidable that I didn't do it at all. Even a little bit. A line of work that begins with passion and dedication but comes to require training so that the academia feels intimately linked to the passion is ideal. In conclusion, few personality types are as poetic and kind-hearted as mediators. Their altruism and vivid imagination allow mediators to overcome many challenging obstacles, more often than not brightening the lives of those around them. Their creativity is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Growth? Growth? Yet mediators can easily be tripped up in areas where idealism and altruism are more of a liability than an asset. Whether it's finding or keeping a partner, making friends, reaching dazzling heights on the career ladder, or planning for the future, mediators need to put a conscious effort in developing their weaker traits and additional skills. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, I feel so seen. I feel so heard. I feel so understood. I feel so... Fuck, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat a food. Okay, bye.